Welcome to The Disruption Is Now. Join us on this enlightening journey as we explore how AI is impacting our jobs, careers, lives, and the human experience. Each episode, host Greg Matusky will converse with visionaries and innovators at the forefront of AI, diving into its challenges, opportunities, and impact. So buckle up as we venture into the heart of disruption, and together, let's unfold the future. Welcome to another episode of The Disruption Is Now, the podcast that talks about all things AI and specifically how it's going to impact uh, human communications, how it's going to impact our society, our economy, and our careers. Um, I'm Greg Matusky. I am the founder of Gregory FCA. We're a 100-person PR firm and with offices in New York and Philadelphia. I'm really excited about our guest uh, today. In fact, I was up uh, I woke up at about three o'clock in the morning thinking about it because we've had a lot of guests from the agency side on. And this is probably the second guest we've had on from the corporate communication side. Paul Wooding is the director, is the head of corporate comm at KX in London which uh, does a lot of uh, data analysis and, and the, have the world's only hybrid vector database for generative AI, which I really don't know what that means. <laughs> but Paul, maybe real fast, you can correct me and tell me what KX actually does as a start point. Yeah, there. That sounded pretty good to me, Greg. Well, first of all, thank you for, for having me on. I mean, I mean in a nutshell, um, KX um, is, um, is a company that um, was founded um, to help um, principally firms in the financial services sector, although we've expanded far more widely now, but to be able to drive greater value from their data. And that was around data management, real-time analytics, which is one of our specialities. But uh, our database is built on um, a, a vector um, platform, um, the way that the data is saved. And it just so happens that vector embeddings are the foundational technology for generative AI. So, you know, we've been doing this for 26 years, um, but, you know, we are now smack bang in the middle of this, this revolution. So, you know, my personal passions and interest in AI from how it's going to affect communications have sort of married with my professional work. So it's a really exciting time for me. And as you'll see, hey, you know, Paul, trace that back. When did you become excited about AI in, in communications? What was the impetus there? I think it has to be when ChatGPT dropped public in November last year. I'd been using some of the, or trialing some of the systems like Jasper and Copy AI previously, but they'd never sort of, they'd never ignited my, you know, real interest. I was like curious um, and I'd used a few of them and they were quite nice, but the interfaces were, you know, very menu driven. There wasn't that right. natural Template driven. Yeah. There wasn't that sort of natural. I'm now going to this as my day to day workflow. And then honestly, it was like a light bulb going on that November day. It was just like, wow. Oh my what? gosh. Wait, wait a second, Dan. Is he is he telling my story? I, I'm, I'm talking to Dan in the studio here because I had the exact same experience. But I started a little earlier. I started about three years ago, thinking what it, what would it be if a machine could help us create content? And we did a lot of work, and we actually created a database of all the all the things we ever wrote, wrote here at Gregory SCA. And we tagged them and you could go in and you could find out that we ever write a media training script for X Y Z kind of company. Very awkward. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't really used, right? But we had all the information. And and so when Chat GPT came out in that November day and I first saw it, Paul, I literally giggled. Yeah. I, I thought, this is it. Yeah. And for me, as somebody who's been around the industry, I finally thought, wow, you know, for many times I tried to help people learn to write. And it was, I'd give webinars and seminars. I'd be very energetic, but walk out of the room and still didn't move the needle a lot. And I said, wow, I can, I can really help people. I can, I can show them. Like, they don't have to worry about the data, the words, the syntax, yeah. the, the verbs. verbs. All, all I have to teach them is where are we going? You know, how do we create the message? So I share your passion. And uh, I think it's going to be transformative. What's you're on the inside now? You were on the you were you did work for the evil empire. I have, at crossed, I have crossed the chasm. Uh, I have indeed. Yeah, yeah. A few, I've been back a few times as well, so I've got skin uh, in the game on both sides. Tell me what it's like from the corporate side and how 
do you run into any resistance? Do you have to educate? You're an AI firm, so yeah. I'm sure they understand it well. But how have you socialized it? And how has it improved workflows? Yeah, so I think it's it's a really good point at saying, you know, obviously we're in the middle of this. So as you would imagine, we're a company where AI internally, with the appropriate safeguards, you know, don't start sticking confidential information into it unless you're using the the enterprise version where you can ring fence it, et cetera. So we, we are, I would say, you know, a company that is, is definitely at the bleeding edge of it. Um, so it's encouraged. Um, for sure. And we've got a, you know, a CEO who's very passionate about it. And he's very open as well, which I think is very important. You know, he's very open about using it. He's encouraged us to use it um, with those caveats in place. And, you know, therefore, I think all of us feel empowered to do it. I think what I found interesting is that obviously, and I think this has probably been the same for, for most, you know, new technologies that come into into companies, there are always going to be those, you know, those, those sort of um, superhero users, which I've just called myself a superhero, which is a bit embarrassing, but you know what I mean? Those people who really pick up and run with it. And then they become, they become a bit of a, you know, a totem for everyone going, Hey, um, you're, you're using that a lot. How can that help me? What, 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 what can that do? So I've sort of hoped that informally I've been able to give people, you know, some tips on, on how it's helping my productivity and workflows. Well, I think you make two really important points about the socialization process. One is from the top, people have to be bought in, right? And there was just a comment on LinkedIn. I don't know. I, you probably follow Ethan Molik, the Wharton professor yes. who writes a lot on yeah. AI. And just today, he wrote that uh, as he goes up the food chain in the hierarchy in corporations, he runs into more and more people who have never used it, and they don't understand the value, and they're not champions of it. And all they hear about are the risks, the scaries, as I call them, right? And if you have a leader who is willing to commit to make it to to implementing it and understand and makes it clear this is not a this is not a risk to your job, but this is a real career changing event that if you know if we work together and you learn this, you will be a more valuable employee for the rest of your life, Absolutely. no matter where you go and yeah. what you do. You could become a screenwriter and it would still be valuable. And the second point that you made, I think is really important, is you do need those superheroes. You do need those um, hyper-productive people um, who run into your office and say, look what I just did, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. And you go, oh, my God, let's get that out to everyone. That's amazing. Yeah. Inside agencies, you know, I, they did a study. Well, who did it? Uh, I can't remember. One of the tech companies that said that our clients, clients, corporations are using it more than agencies are using it. Yeah, absolutely. And you go, what yeah. is going on? And you figure, you know, they want to, agencies want to maintain their status as experts, right? And this is a threat yep. to that status. And they don't really understand that by working collaboratively with your client, you can be seen as an expert and gain so much more because there are no rule books, right? Like yeah, yeah. you probably learned this the way I did on Twitter and listening to people and experimenting Absolutely. in a very safe space. Yeah. So I'll let you take it away yeah, and see yeah, if yeah. any of that makes well, sense. I mean, to tell you what it reminded me of, it reminded me of my seventh birthday when my parents gave me a Commodore VIC-20. I'd had no technical... Um, you know, uh, exposure before really. Um, and yet I've been given this computer and the manual was part manual, but, but mainly it was a coding manual. And as a seven year old, I was writing basic programs, peeking and poking my heart out. And it was just magical. And I tell you what, here I am 40 odd years later, feeling exactly the same. I went, and I, I can't program, right? I can't code, but I'm fascinated by it. I'm looking at my desk now. I've got three Raspberry Pis I play around with and what have you. I went, and the minute I knew that ChatGPT could write code for you, I started thinking, and very similar to, to you know what you were thinking about even before AI when you were tagging your content, I thought, can this build an article summarizer for me that can scrape a website and then instantly summarize it and give me the salient points so that when we get media coverage come in, I can do that. I reckon within an hour and a half of having no coding knowledge, I'd built an app, a web app that runs in Replit 
And, you know, I was just, it was like Christmas had come all at once. And that was, yeah, that was like November. And I've been, you know, adding to my experience since then. I think the other thing to say is um, about sort of buying from the top. And again, I'll use my CEO as an example, because I think what what he's getting our customers to focus on, I think he's very relevant for agencies as well. Generative AI will become table stakes deployment for everyone, right? If it isn't already. And, it, you know, I think um, even if it isn't sanctioned, I think it's table stakes for a lot of people in the old shadow IT, you know, they're using it off off network and what have you. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's a really important that, point. Absolutely. So, but what we're saying is think about those golden use cases, those innovative things that you can build that you've never thought of before or perhaps have and never had the ability to do. Now apply that yeah. to an agency setting when you're thinking, how can I surprise and delight clients? Man, I mean, you know, the, the, the door's yeah, open for me. Did you give him me. that phrase, surprise and delight? I say that around here 24-7. <laughs> Dan, you must have briefed him. So <laughs> I, I hear you. Keep yeah. going. Yeah, well, I mean, I, you know, I think that's um, – I think that's the – that is the, the – for me, the excitement. But I do think it's important to say, and you touched on it, the threat as well. Right. And I think that's how you and I sort of initially had a conversation on LinkedIn was that research, which was talking about what is this going to mean for junior jobs and right, for, right. you know, and for the work that was previously seen to be high value, extremely billable. And again, you know, coming, coming at it from my my experience, which is I've always got an agency mentality on. I will never lose that. Right. I spent Right. 15 years, you know, the way to be inside a corporation. Absolutely. You know, very, very mindful of the service that we offer. But again, you know, back in November, December, I was thinking, hang on a minute, you can't bill me now for a briefing document that took you three hours. You can't bill me for a four hours worth of ideation for a campaign. You should. And I'm not saying when, when I say you can't, I don't mean, you know, that's wrong. But my brain now is always going to be, hang on, we can we can turbocharge this. So I think right, I think right. that the real thing to understand now is where is that value proposition, and then how do we then get you know the agency teams thinking about that and delivering that to clients? And I don't know where that's going to net out, but it's an interesting conversation. I feel. Well, let's go into that. But before, let's drop back for a second, just on where does it uh, play out in its biggest value? I I was listening to an interview with Sam Altman recently, right? And he said before they launched it, he believed that it would most impact uh, blue collar workers, uh, truck drivers with, you know, autonomous cars, uh, manufacturing with uh, robotic factories. Then he thought it would take into the white collar realm, those tedious tasks like insurance claims adjusting or or some or uh, commercial contract review, right? Then he thought the higher level would be pretty insulated, the highest level consultants, the highest paying jobs in the white collar hierarchy. And then he thought it would never touch human creativity because he said that's the secret sauce. And he said it came out and it turned the the pyramid upside down. The first that really excited people was its creativity, right? Yeah. And second, right, was um, was white collar higher level jobs, for instance, merger and acquisition professionals who have to review spreadsheets and find anomalies yeah. and opportunities. Then it's the tedium and then it's the blue collar. And I found that really interesting as far as where it's going to go and how it's going to go. Um, and we'll jump forward, yeah. right? Then you had said you talked a little bit about where the value proposition is in the billing uh, in the billing approach. I mean, I can tell you probably 50 stories in my firm where things and you said, find those those really amazing functions that you can build for it. I use a different phrase. I say, let's look at our industry and find out where we've accepted friction. Yep. And we've done it and instilled it in our plan. Right. For instance, uh, I get an opportunity with the Wall Street Journal and the CEO doesn't respond fast enough or the, or the subject matter expert and you miss it, okay? At the end of the month, you go, well, hey, I had an opportunity the Wall Street Journal. The client says, I don't really care, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we didn't, eh, you know, it's, it doesn't go on your scorecard because we never saw the visibility for it. Like, what could you build to accelerate that? And here it's been very simple. Now, you know, we know the client. 
we take the background, we write the quotes, five different versions, and we send those over, and then it reduces the, the carry of the CEO. No longer do I have to write it or call you to do it. I can edit it, yeah. which is a lot easier. So we've improved our response time and increased the number of placements we've, got, we've secured, just trying to overcome those friction points. Yeah. And that's going to be, for me, my, my 2024 charge is to really try to focus on that. Anything that's friction, right? The yeah. three-hour brainstorming session that you may have nothing to show for because, you know, in, in the human mind, you can't always come up with the perfect uh, solution in three hours. But the client really doesn't care about that effort. What they care about is the work product at the end. So I think it's going to have huge a transformational impact on all of that. Hey, I'd like to play a game with you. I did this yesterday real fast. <laughs> Go <right>? ahead. <laughs> We're going to call this... Uh, uh, where does it fall? The jagged edge. Right. Uh, that's an Ethan Molik phrase for what AI does well and what AI still struggles with uh, or may never do well. So I'll give you the task, right? On a scale from one to 10, you tell me where you think it falls. I, I, right. I, I'll tell you. Uh, let's start with the easy ones. Uh, how about writing a quote for your CEO in a press release? Uh, and the scale is one to 10 is one to 10, Paul. Yeah. Well, well, and what one is that it will still stay like hundred percent with it, with a human endeavor and 10% up the no, one is one is it's just not good. I got to rewrite it. And 10 is, Oh, that's, oh. that's good. Well, um, I'm going to say that I'm going to not gonna be con contradictory here, but I think it can be between one to 10, depending on how good you are at the prompts and how you can, um, train your models to be more accurate first time round, And I think you touch on a really good point, if I can just cover this, because I, I was just going to make this point when, on the example that you just used. I think one of the big concerns and perhaps some of the resistance against, against this, and I've seen this commentary many times, is, oh, accuracy, it's vanilla, we're going to be flooded with vanilla content. I think that those were valid um, points to raise six months ago. But, you know, going back to the start of our conversation about you building these these agents now, where, which is trained on your data, you upload all of your um, CEO's commentary, you upload speeches, you upload white papers, you upload his tone of voice. A model becomes completely trained on how you want that response to turn out. And then you put the request in from the media. You know, I'm going to say you do that. I'm going to give you a 10, right? I'm going to give you a nine or a 10. Because, and that's oh, where we need to get to, right? I've got to, I got to stop you. I got to ask you a question. Are we brothers from another mother? <laughs> I think, I think anyone who's been in in comms, you know, a good while, and has always, and I love the way that you talked about friction because I couldn't agree with you more, and has always had their their sort of their head switched and their radar on for about how can we continually improve? Because let's face it, right? We have been an industry. Uh, well, profession that has been disrupted so much over the past 20 odd years. You know, when I first started, it was spray mount media clippings, as you faxing press releases, calling journalists up, lots of lunches, what have you. You know, some of that's still very important. But then the media came along, uh, the internet came along, and that fragmented. Then social media came along, we had to adapt. So I think, you know, we've always got our, our radar on, we've always got the spider senses tingling for what's next. And this is the biggest what's next, I think, that any of us could have faced. So I think as long as you sort of uh, have got that awareness, you should constantly, and it, go, it does, it goes back to those golden use cases, right? And, that, and what we've just described is not rocket science. That, to me, is the magic. It, it, it doesn't need 10 Python developers and, uh, you know, a UX expert, sit, you know, charging you whatever you charge, sitting there going, can you build this? It doesn't need a hackathon. You know, hackathons, right. hackathons have, been, have become sitting in front of the TV with your laptop thinking, oh, I've got an idea. I mean, that's, well, you know, for me, that's just like the I, wow. I couldn't, I couldn't have said it better myself. And I, I'll uh, address that uh, on a scale from one to 10. I agree with you 100%. The first time we had, and this was before ChatGPT, in 2021, at our annual meeting, we previewed our first generative AI platform internal to our firm. And it wrote the first paragraph pretty good, right? 
The second paragraph, it, claimed, it was about Gregory F. Say, it claimed we had a mascot named Senior Frog, which I don't know where that came from. Uh, there's a bar in Cancun called Senior, Senior yeah, Frog that yeah. I might, might have been to a few years ago. <laughs> right. And then, and then um, it gave the, 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 the quote that I detest, and that is, we're excited, oh. we're honored, right? Like, yeah. just once I'd love to see a CEO say, well, we're not really excited, that's excited about this new hire, but it was the best we could do given the- We've the been trying campaign. to get this person in for ages, so we just sort of, yeah, we have to cut right. net a bit so, wider. And then when we did right we release or in March, we had that same phenomenon. It was just too much we're excited, because why? It had gone out to the internet, it found the algorithms and a lot of bad releases out there which have quotes that say we're excited. So we got around that by making sure that there was a prompt that asked the user to write, what is the vision for the company, right? Mm -hmm. And as soon as we did that and re related the quote back to there, it all started to make sense, yeah. right? So even, even in that respect, no one had to think about it. The machine was thinking about it for us and it really improved the quality of the, uh, of the yeah. I, I'm gonna ask you another one, scale from one to 10, you ready? Yeah, I'll answer this succinctly this time brainstorming new campaigns oh, yeah. seven or eight yeah i'd be i'd be uh, there maybe six to seven mm -hmm. uh, I, I think uh i think you're right on uh my experience is if you come up there'll be maybe 10 vanilla uh, if you have 10 eight will be vanilla as oh, start a blog start a podcast yeah. start, you know go to instagram but then there'll be one yeah and you'll go that I could work with. Yeah. I could really, really work with. Uh, yeah. As an example, I was pitching a chemical company, which I did not get, large chemical company. And they asked for, uh, they really want to reset the gauge with regard to uh, how they express themselves. And they wanted to make chemistry something exciting. So one of the 10 was, and they want to go to uh, teachers and instructors, professors, hold a contest nationwide contest for the first uh, chemistry high school teacher in space and by, by space on SpaceX or, or uh, Mr. Bezos project, right? And uh, for $250,000, I go, oh my God, that's like a golden idea. And it wasn't that clear when it presented it, right? It said, you know, send somebody into space, you know, that's what it, but when you put the rails on that, you think that's that's a really powerful idea. That's something yeah, that could yeah, yeah. really capture yeah. the media's attention. So, yeah, again, you may look at a list of 10 and eight of them are losers. But if you really and one has a germ of idea, if you go back at that that eighth that has a germ of idea, I think you can really I mean, I give the example I once put, put in um uh, connect these two disparate ideas and come up with a product. And the disparate ideas was retirement planning and VR goggles. And it came up with V retirement, experience your retirement today based on the information you provide. So, you yeah. know, if, if you there's, a, there's a glimpse have, into the future I probably don't want just yet, but yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Or how you could get there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Cause we do do a lot of financial services also like yourself. So, um, Paul, it's been a great interview. I, I want to invite you, if you're ever in New York or Philadelphia, to get together. I think we could really, we could probably spend an evening Absolutely. just brainstorming, walk it out of there with our hearts pounding and uh, perspiring with build, all the ideas. Build a few uh, chat GPTs and some right. new agents. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I'm over in but New York is, every now and again. So yeah, I'd love to see Greg. It is very heartening to see somebody who's excited on the inside as much as I am. <laughs> Uh, from the agency side and what it really means for uh, our industry, our careers, our culture, our society, and doesn't come without risk. But I think as long as there's people like you who are, who are those superheroes, I think we're in pretty good hands. So I'd like <laughs> to thank you for being with us. That's good to say. Thank you. Great, great to talk to you. Good talking to you. Have a great one. This podcast is a production of Gregory FCA. If you enjoyed our discussion today and want to continue exploring the transformative power of AI, please check out more episodes and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts.